Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is Scout Sergeant McCall, whose stealth, tracking, and navigational skills are renowned amongst a regiment renowned for stealth, tracking, and navigation. In the video today, I'll be painting this model from the new 2021 Gaunt's Ghost set. I spent much of my review of this set nattering on about sub-assemblies, and how some of the models were difficult to paint fully assembled, and also difficult to assemble after painting. Well, McCull is one of the ones that I'll be putting in the hard work to do exactly that. I'll talk about specifics of that shortly, but for now I've thrown on some sand and baking powder with super glue to create some interesting texture on the base. Blue tacked up the contact surfaces and given all of the pieces a grey primer. As there are six models to talk about and I don't want to repeat myself and make six near identical videos, I'll concentrate on one feature or area of each model in each video. For McCall it makes sense to talk about the browns, the belts, scabbard, tree and rifle stock. Which of course seems like such a dull subject but there's a few features, tricks, and subtle differences between them that I can pull out. Whilst I painted by number with my base coats in all of these places that will be hard to reach once assembled, I painted the base a flat dark brown and then dry brushed it with a light brown. These are the only two brown paints I have, and so all of the variation needs to be done with just these two. The leather belts, sling and the scabbard I also base coated in the dark brown and highlighted with the same light brown, but I'm highlighting in a different way. By spotting and striping down from the highest face or corner of each of these pieces, I can give the impression of some cracking or damage in leather. I'm putting in some effort to try and keep these lines somewhat even so that it contrasts against the inconsistent dry brushing that the base received. But that leaves the tree, the biggest of the foliage sections in the set. How can I differentiate this? On my wet palette I can pull out some black and mix with the dark brown to desaturate and darken it. Pretty simple stuff, everyone's made a shadow colour with black before. Except this isn't my shadow colour. This will be my mid-tone. And after base coating the whole tree with this desaturated brown, I can then highlight with just the normal dark brown. Not the light brown. I'm still using just the dark brown here. Honestly, this wasn't such a tidy highlight, and it quickly descended into overbrushing, which is dry brushing's messier sibling. With the inside of the cloak now having some basic highlights and the wooden section is essentially complete, I can finish the assembly of the model. A quick bit of poly cement on all of the contact surfaces and the model goes together nicely. Except that there's this one join on his shoulder that stands out. I mentioned in my review that this was a join that would require a little bit of gap filling, which by itself is not a big deal. But I also wanted to sub-assemble with this join separate, and gap filling over paint, even just primer, is a little more difficult. Well, let's have a terrible idea. Last video I nearly destroyed Bragg's head with the misapplication of this solvent weld. It flows very quickly into cracks and recesses of models, such as characters' faces, or joins between parts. If I can very carefully mix some of my slurry mix of the solvent into this crack, I might just be able to fill it smoothly and be able to easily paint over the top. Well, that seems to have worked. Let's let it evaporate and get some paint down. I finished base coating the rest of the cloak, mixing my different greens and blue. In some ways catching blue in the shadows and the lighter greens on the higher surfaces, but also mixing it up a little bit more randomly. I find the overall look of the cloak doesn't rely on the underneath highlights in the shadows in the same way that other parts of the ghost models do. And that's probably because I fill it so much with the camo pattern. But before all that I'll fill in the other parts of the model. Particularly I achieved a good effect with the straight silver. 
In recent months, I've broken the habit of always painting from a darker color to a lighter color, and rather painting both towards dark or light, depending on which would look best for that particular model. Well, this also applies to metallic paints. So I painted the knife in a bright silver and picked out the cannelure with a darker metallic, highlighting the uniform with green as with brag, but the scabbard on the back got a much lighter gray, still shadowed with the flat black in the darker recesses. As I went around the various parts of the model, I found myself bouncing between the camo pattern and back. I'll fix up some highlights on the belt, and I'll spot in some of the light brown for the camo. I'll put in some black spots of the camo, and I'll fill in McColl's hair. I finished up the camo pattern before a lot of the other parts were done, and so when I put on the first layer of muddy wash, I could leave it to dry and concentrate on some other part. And the last part of the model not approaching completion is the face. Previously base coated with a light brown, I now bring in some Caucasian, slightly ready tan. Carefully painting in a layer of highlight and letting it dry before doing another. I have noticed that I have the tendency to paint the layers on faces far too soon. As they are quite small, the paint hasn't had chance to dry before I come back and then tear it up with the brush. This time I'm giving each layer time to dry. I also noticed the dog tags, and oh how I wish I'd painted the head separately. Miniature paint keyhole surgery over, the model is pretty much complete. But I spend a little longer poking at all of the features to fix some mistakes. Most of my ghost models take half an hour to an hour, but McCall took me three and a half hours. The extra time went into just being more careful and going back to fix the mistakes. Overall, I think that difference is visible on the final model. It's still not winning any competitions, but I'm pretty happy with it. So please check out my playlist of Gaunt's Ghost videos. I've been showing many methods for making the Tanith cloaks, as well as other modeling techniques, parts, and supplies for making a Gaunt's Ghost army. Also, with all of the other youtube -y things, there's a comment section for asking questions, a description with links to my other stuff. But with all that said, I'm Edsgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.